Hello everybody, welcome to the Real Meal Podcast. I know we've been gone for about four months. Something like but, that. But uh, we're finally back. Uh, we've just been procrastinating. And I guess pretty much the only excuse we have is that we've been lazy. COVID. And unmotivated. <laughs> yeah, we can use that. We can use that as an excuse too. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll say that. Make sure you guys wash your hands. Stay clean. Stay clean. Six feet apart. Wear masks where they're required. And, yeah, so, on today's episode... Oh, by the way, my name's Jacob. I'm Joe. (laughs) And this is where we serve up life's bullshit on a plate. There we go. I haven't used that. I honestly haven't used that intro since, like, the first episode. Technically, this is episode six because we did film five. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did, huh? But uh, I think we're going to redo five. This is a redo? Uh, or are we doing that later? Five, I think we're gonna do with Austin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's just jump right back into it. Uh, today's episode of discussion, we're gonna talk about shitty music, and by shitty music, music we don't like. Uh, we apologize in advance. Not really, if you like these bands or artists, but if you do. Prepare don't, for them to like get torn apart. Don't take it to heart. This is our opinions. We're not stating facts. This is all based off of the way we see it, the way we feel about it. It's um, it, it don't just take it with a grain of salt. Salt. Yeah, we're we're dumb. Extremely. We just, we just love to talk about music as well. Yeah, I'm sure they can figure that out. I mean, how many of those are? How how many episodes are about music so far? Um, like three of them. I think all of them, but all of them, but but number five, number one and five. Yeah, no, was number one about. was about when you got jumped. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, number two is about Helljoy. Yep. Number three was the talk about music that we like. Right. Number four was about mayhem, and this one's about music we dislike. So I don't know how like to jump into it. What's some what's a what's a band that you just cannot stand? Fly for Finger life? Death Punch. I I respect what they stand for. I respect their message. I don't respect them as people. Well, mainly Ivan Moody. I don't I don't like him. I don't respect him at all. I get that he's doing everything he can to like make things better to try to get clean again, but he he keeps on doing the same thing over and over. He gets clean, and then he goes right back into it. About two months later, and he's walked off stage how many times? He's quote unquote quit the band how many times? But he keeps on coming back and doing the same thing over and over. Most of their music sounds the same to me. It's uh, it's kind of like disturbed in a way. I'm not too big on them either. It's like a lot of their music sounds exactly the same. Yeah, with them, it's like you hear one song, you pretty much heard the rest, huh? Exactly. I think the only songs that I really like by five figure uh, i think there's only one that i actually enjoy but i wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to listen to it would be um uh what was it called uh i think it was jekyll and hyde no i hate that song (laughs) yeah me too um yeah i can't remember off the top of my head it'll it'll come to me later wrong side of heaven no sir (laughs) fuck that uh yeah, I agree. Um you know, it's like I don't there's a couple of bands that really top that list. Um I don't really like Five Finger Death Punch mainly for the reason they they sound so radio friendly. Right. They sound like a radio friendly washed down version of Pantera. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big Pantera fan. I fucking love Pantera. They definitely inspired me as a musician and just kind of that badass, no fucks given attitude that they used to have. Right. It's like they they don't care about anything. They're just doing what they love to do is music. But with Five Finger Death Punch's music, some of it at least, I feel like they're trying so hard to have like a big tough guy image. Right. And honestly, like, I don't know. It's like, it really upsets me when I ask somebody what their favorite metal band is. 
and they say Five Finger Death Punch, like, Five Finger Death Punch fucking slaps ass. Like, no. They're so hardcore. And I asked them if they've heard of Pantera. Oh, God. They say no. You know what? I, one thing I hate is like, oh, what, what metal bands do you listen to? Uh, Nirvana. Uh, I listen to ACDC. And that, no, that's not metal. No, no, not by any means. It's like, you can name so many other bands that I would be like, oh, okay, that's that's fine. Like really popular, like known bands, you could name off Metallica. I'd accept that. I'd take that. Like that, it makes no sense to me. Metal's literally in their name. Same with Megadeth. That was that was started because of Metallica. Right. Um. Uh, yeah. Fucking. Yeah. It just it hurts my feelings when somebody doesn't don't. When people don't really know where they get their influence from. Because you can clearly tell, like, right. Five Finger Death Punch's influences. It's it's n- not hard at all. It's right. super, like, super night and day, like, that they're a Pantera watered-down version. Right. Uh, or well, even, even, like, fucking some other bands. You could clearly see that they got that sound from much better Mm -hmm. there's a so you if you just by listening to uh, Avenged Sevenfold for example you could like that that's one of the bands that you could definitely tell like what their influences are like one of their biggest influences when it comes to their sound is Metallica oh yeah Hail to the King is like that's it's Black Album yeah that's that's, pretty much Black Album that's straight off of the Black Album for sure (laughs) but it's like that's that's one thing that I'm not really too big on is like other bands that sound a lot like another band. Yeah. It's like I feel like you need to change it up. I will give I will give Hail to the King this. It was one of their not so not necessarily earlier songs, but it was like kind of like after they found their sound, but they kind of wanted to take it back some more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I I, I read that Hail to the King was pretty much like in tribute to the Black Album. Right. Because, I don't know, I saw some comparisons that Hail to the King was pretty much comparable to Sad But True. Mm Mm-hmm. Which I can see. Yeah, I can (laughs) see that 100%. One thing that really hurt my feelings was, uh, I was watching this video of a concert at at Rookies, and, uh, one of the GK bands were playing there. Mm Mm-hmm. It was an old concert, by the way. Right. And they, any metal song that they could have played at that show, they played that one. Mm-hmm. But it's not that it's Avenged Sevenfold that bothered me. She was like, all right, do we have any metal heads in the crowd tonight? And then, like, oh. the two or three people that were there were like, yeah, yeah. And she's like, well, you should know this song. This is Basics. What'd she play? Hail of the King. Oh, no, oh, that's what she played? Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's basics, dude. I wouldn't call it that. Like, she was like, this is basics. You should know this song. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you should at least name the band that inspired them. Right. Like, or at least just say, this is Avenged Sevenfold. Yeah. Don't go and say, well, this I- is basic... Especially Basic if only metal. like, especially if only like two or three people in the crowd like raise their hand or said something when they any metalheads in here. You yeah, know what I mean, it's like you can't say, "Is there any metalheads here?" and then play pretty much the watered down version, right, of the band that they're inspired for. It is like I would only say, "Is there any metalheads here?" if I were like playing Metallica or Megadeth or Slayer, mm-hmm. or literally any other metal band, but like fucking. Five Finger Death Punch or Avenged Sevenfold. Right. And call them basics. Like, this is the metal that you should know. Fuck it's, no. <laughs> no you, I don't... I personally don't feel like there's a such thing as, like, basics, basics when yeah. it comes to, like, music and stuff. You could you could listen to fucking anything. And, like, it... Like, oh, fucking... You should know this song, and then they play something by, like, Joe Bonamassa. Like, no, like... How many people can raise their hand and say say they know who Joe Bonamassa is? Yeah, do you exactly. Know, do you know who that is? No, <laughs> he, he's like a like a jazzy like bluesy artist. 
I, I will say uh, I give one exception for the basics, and that's Black Sabbath. Mm-hmm. If you don't know Black Sabbath, that's literally metal. That's where fucking metal came from. Right. It's uh, Black Sabbath and and Metallica are the two like most like most mainstream metal band. Yeah, 100%. I would only well, eh. the closest to follow them up in my opinion is Iron Maiden. Yeah, uh, by Black, uh, by Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden. Uh, there's, um, what was that fucking song name? I don't pay attention to like the more known songs. Um, what's a known song by Black Sabbath? I'm blanking right now. Iron Man, Paranoid, War Pigs. Yeah, Paranoid. That's that's a big one. Iron Man too. That one. Yeah, yeah. You said that. <laughs> that one, like everybody knows that one. Mm-hmm. It, even like, if they don't know the name of the song they know how it goes I know so many people that don't don't listen to anything like even remotely close to rock or metal and then they hear the, the first note on Iron Man and they're just like oh I know this song this is a good song I love this song like do you know this song or have you heard it before I don't know you're like oh yeah that's that's the song that goes like I am Iron Man mm-hmm. like just take away fucking two words and you have the title <laughs> right um Another one, it well. Oh fuck! I lost what I was gonna say. I'm stupid. All right, I'll go. <laughs> go for it. And this one's gonna be kind of controversial among some people, but there's one band that like really gets under my fucking skin, and that's Skillet. Oh, <laughs> uh, I've seen them live. I can't say much. <laughs> right, wait, was it Skillet? I think I did see Skillet live, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but, man, it's like, I can sit there and tell you, like, everything that I don't like about them. Mm-hmm. But now that we're, like, talking into a microphone, I can't think of anything to say. But I, I just, I, there's something about them that I just can't fucking stand. It kind of goes back to, like, a lot of the, the things that I was saying before about other bands. Like, a lot of their music sounds the same. Yeah, um, Skillet definitely. Like I heard Legendary, and I was like, I don't think I've heard that. It's the fucking Monday Night Raw theme song now. Oh. Every time like they play that song, it's like, oh god, right? I listen, to fucking Born for Greatness by Papa Roach, mm-hmm. the old one. <laughs> I've um, one thing I will give them is they are some talented motherfuckers. They are like the the chick in that uh, one of the chicks in that band. She's sitting there playing guitar one second, then she puts the guitar down and starts playing violin, and then next thing you know, she's on drums, and like they're all switching places. Like that's badass. That's I will give them that credit. Yeah, like I'm not I'm not gonna diss on their talent or anything, right? Because yeah, they are talented. It's just I I really fucking hate their music. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like I don't know. Maybe it's just I was I was introduced to different metal early, right? And like different rock early. It's like every time I hear them, it, it just, I don't know. I guess it just sounds so cliche and like tries so hard to be like motivational because they are a Christian man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think like for me personally, I don't I don't mind Skillet too much, and um, it I feel like it's because that's something I grew up on. And that's something that, like, I, I just that it's it's more nostalgic for me. Mm-hmm. It's like I can, I can listen to it and I can I can jam out to it a little bit, but like, it's one of the it is one of those bands that I can't listen to continuously for a long period of time. Um, but I feel like that's a lot of a lot of other bands that I listen to though. Like I I don't go out of my way to listen to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know, man. I I think it's just like the the old grand cliche, like overcoming dark like dark times. Like you were great and powerful and shit. Well, I do like it sometimes. I don't like it in like every song, every other song, and pretty much like all of the skillet songs I've heard mm-hmm. are that. I'm pretty sure they have other ones, but. Honestly, I just don't like them enough to like want to give it a chance, and I've heard enough to like validate me talking shit. Right. 
It's not like I've just listened to like one song and I was like, they suck. No, I've heard enough to like make that decision on my own. What's what's one band that like you um how do I put it? You 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 don't like them but you like them. Lincoln Park. <laughs> Lincoln Park. I I don't like Lincoln Park. Here's the thing though. It it comes from like this this period in my life where I really loved Green Day and for some reason people thought it was a good idea to like compare Green Day and Lincoln Park. Which is, first off, the dumbest fucking thing you can do. Right. Because, one, Green Day is an alternative pop punk band. Linkin Park's an alternative new metal band. Mm-hmm. Give us one second. What's up? No, oh, nothing. <laughs> I'll show you later. Um, is everybody talking shit? <laughs> no. Or are they agreeing or something? Oh, they're agreeing. <laughs> it's like with Linkin Park, yeah, like... People drove me not to like them at an early age, mm-hmm. and I kind of always held something against them. I just don't now. Like I'm grown, I don't understand the comparison. Like, why right. would you even compare those two bands? I can understand comparing Bleak 182 and Green Day, and maybe like fucking Corn and Linkin Park, right. or like Limp Biscuit and Linkin Park. But comparing two bands out of this, like two completely different genres. You're never going to hear rap on a Green Day song except for fucking Nightlife. Yeah, I, I hate that. I hated <laughs> that so much. You're not going to hear any fucking, like, close punk rock songs, like pop punk songs on Linkin Park. Mm-hmm. I don't think they've ever, like, came close to, like, the stereotypical Green Day sound. Maybe, like, from Dookie or, like, the most punk rock on American Idiot, like, St. Jimmy. Mm-hmm. It's two completely different That's, bands. There's It's comparing apples to oranges. It's, like, it's... I feel like one of the bands that like everybody bashes on I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to say <laughs> Nickelback I don't mind that band I don't mind that their music oh, man, I can go on and <laughs> but the only thing that I can't fucking stand is their, their front man I forget his name Chad I don't Kruger. care to learn it. yeah it he's such a fucking douchebag it's not even funny he's sitting there like Oh, I, like, we're more metal than Slipknot. Like, no the fuck you're not. You're nowhere close to that. Oh, we're more diverse. Not really. You've been making the same kind of music for your entire career. Like, it's it's not anything special. I could listen to your music, but... Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not just going to go out of my way to listen to it. I just don't mind it. I, I will, so, I'm not going to lie, sometimes I will fucking sit there and scream some of their songs at the top of my lungs because fuck it, why not? But like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I don't mind them. I fucking, you can hate me all you want. I don't care. Yeah, um, with Linkin Park, back to Linkin Park. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, like, Linkin Park... It's it's the unfortunate thing that happens sometimes. You get into an artist after they passed away. Mm-hmm. It's like I've always held like such a vendetta because of like the shit that other kids were saying to me when I was younger. Mm-hmm. That when he like passed away, like that's when I gave them a chance. Right. And I realized, you know, they're not that bad. Like they do have their moments. Yeah. As does every band. Yeah, every band has like those types, but it's like a. I don't know. It's like something that I wouldn't casually listen to, but if it came on now, like mm-hmm. I'll listen to it and I'll I'll sing some of their songs. Like right. fucking It's like it's more of a meme now, but who can't fucking resist? Who can mm-hmm. resist singing crawling? <laughs> <laughs> right. Even if like, even if you're doing it as a joke, you're still singing it. <laughs> yeah, you're you're giving them that attention. Yeah. Or like what is that song called? See, I I'm not a fan of uh, of Lincoln Park, but yes, I do have those songs. So I can one, once I hear that crawl, like that crawling, I'm yeah. just like ah fuck yeah, say less, and I'm, I'm fucking jamming out to it. Like there are like most bands that I listen to or don't. There's there's those select songs that I'm like oh I'm I'm gonna get down to it. Yeah, um. I'm not gonna lie though. I like Fort um, Fort Minor better. 
Fort Minor. Yeah, that's uh, what's his face is sideband. In Lincoln Park, I'm pretty sure it was Lincoln Park. It was Lincoln Park, right? Well, let me look. I know he has a. I know Chester had like a side like. They just they they just like re released an album. Yeah, let me look into this right quick. Uh, but yeah, with Lincoln Park, you know, there's some songs that are really good. Uh, but yeah, they do have like their moments, and I can't understand why people. Mike Shinoda. Mike Shinoda. Yeah, here's his uh, side project. Um, let me go through their discography and like try to find some songs that I listen to on the regular now. <laughs> like, there's songs like "What I've Done." Right. That one, uh, I'm okay on. I don't. <laughs> I can't really name too many other songs as I don't listen to them. <laughs> one step closer. I dig that one. That one's a good one. Right. Yeah. That. Uh, that one. I. I can get down to that one. Uh. I like with you. The thing is, is that like the more that I've like grown, the more mm-hmm. that I stepped away from just like purely pop punk, like three chord guitar driven and I really appreciate the fucking instrumentals and shit now right even like the scratching that fucking Johan does Mm -hmm. like this song with you like it starts out with him scratching and even like when they play that song live it starts out with him like tuning up the the fucking where are they turntables and he gives like a introduction like a little scratching session Right. Scratching solo, I guess you could say. Huh. And then it just hits and like I was watching it, it drops and it's like Yeah. You got that feeling, it's like, oh, oh like I'm hyped now. Yeah, I was watching them play at a uh, Rock Am Ring in two thousand one and they started with that song. Mm-hmm. And as soon as the guitars hit, literally like everybody in the crowd. There's probably like f- maybe ninety thousand people there. Right. As soon as the guitars hit all of them at once just started bouncing up and down and I was like I fucking feel that <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel it <laughs> right that's honestly like when every time that I hear of a band that like does something like that where it's it's one of those things where it's like that crowd control is just like so fucking perfect uh-huh and it, like like, that- like Slipknot with uh was it spit it out yeah and he, like he starts going he's like everybody get down everybody get on the ground and then he start. he says jump the fuck up and everybody jumps the fuck up yeah. I get like I, I get goosebumps thinking about that that's badass that's fucking uh-huh. crowd control but like that's the kind of stuff I do like like you wish that you could like take in, like that much control over yeah. the crowd yeah even I even if it. it's even if it's a crowd of like 30 people if it's a crowd of 30 people, 100, 300, fucking 1,000, a couple thousand, like, that's something I've always wanted to do. Oh, fuck. What's another one? I really don't want to talk about Nickelback because I feel like just talking about them drains me. Like, like you said, Chad Kroger's a fucking piece of shit. I don't, I don't like him. Mm-hmm. He, he's like, he thinks his ass doesn't stink. Right. His lyrics are pretty much like the same fucking thing every time. It's about the same thing. Yeah. And he just comes off as a major douchebag. And the biggest example of that is when he was talking about Stone Sour. Right. Pretty much how they're a Nickelback clone. Yeah, no. (laughs) If anybody... I do agree that they are like one of the biggest selling bands in the world. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, those but are I mean, just I'm pretty sure nobody really wants to go out and sound like fucking Nickelback. No, especially one, with someone as vocal as Corey Taylor. One, nobody wants to go out and sound like Nickelback because they have a terrible reputation. <laughs> first yeah. of all, second, it's just like it's that generic, like rock question mark, like like that that generic sound. Yeah. Plus, I guess a good enough reason to say that. Like why you don't like these bands is just you don't like the way they sound either. I don't like the way Nickelback sounds. Mm-hmm. They just sound. Ah oh, oh, man. When I was a kid, there's a there was I always for whatever reason got Nickelback and Daughtry mixed up. Then later oh on, <laughs> you two? No, no. I, I've 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 talked to so many people that got those two mixed up uh, say, growing I mean, up. I haven't listened to Daughtry enough. Like, oh, I fucking love Daughtry. Um, 
Let's see here. We got. I okay. will. I will give credit where credit is due, though. Burn it to the grounds. A good song. Oh, that's it, that's that was that was the Monday. The dun, 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 like that, that was the Monday Night Raw song for. Right. I think a good three years, and that's I never knew it was Lincoln, like Nickelback until I looked the song up, and I was yeah. like, oh shit, <laughs> right. I'm guilty. And then that that song I played on guitar in Drop D. Uh huh. The uh, fucking what the was it? Banana, if, banana. <laughs> yeah, if everyone cared, I think it was. It's originally on piano, but I decided to say fuck it and. um you know the thing is i like it better when you play it though it, it, i feel like it just sounds better on guitar for whatever reason god i can't believe i'm looking up one of their fucking songs <laughs> uh yeah one of one of my guilty pleasures uh, music wise is um fucking oh god if i can remember the name of the band hey don't play that we're gonna get copyrights <laughs> oh yeah i forgot uh what is a guilty, guilty pleasure for me? What what band do I listen to that no, like nobody knows that I listen to? You probably know that the answer to that. <laughs> that one song uh, that you always play. Which one? <sighs> Fuck. Front porch step. It's by them. Oh, by oh fucking, um, Island of the Misfit Boy by Front Porch Step. From porch porch, uh, front porch step. So, that's like, I could I could get the fuck down to that. How do you how do you like when I play drown. that? Was it drum? Yeah. It, was it the depressing one that I screamed? That's. Oh yeah, yeah, that one too. I thought you were talking about like the one that I play in single guitar. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, that's that's uh, island of the, uh, island of the misfit boy. That one's like super sad boy depressing. See, I. I I love Front Porch Step, but at the same time, I don't because all of their music, it's it's nowhere near like the same. Like all their songs sound different, but at the same time, it's all talking about the same thing. It's all about like depression and heartbreak, and then they, and when it's not, it's about like they're 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 Christians. They're hardcore Christians. They're talking about God and stuff. And for those of you that don't know, I'm on the opposite team, <laughs> if you will. Um, I don't, I don't get down to that. You know what I mean? So like, I don't know. That's just, you, you can always catch me fucking jamming out to some front porch shit. So you would say that's like your guilty pleasure? Yeah, that's my guilty pleasure for sure. Um, another band that, uh, my dogs are going off. Yeah. Let them be. Just fuck it. Let them be. Um. I really don't want to make people mad. I really Just make them mad, bro. Make them mad. We don't give a shit. Dude, I don't, at least. You, you don't give a shit, but I know as soon as I say this. You know. He's a rapper. Oh. Uh, I know. Don't talk about that. <laughs> Should I? <laughs> Fuck it. Talk, wait. Should he talk about this? Hmm. Fuck it. Because I feel like this is the one that's going to make people want to hang me. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking send it, bro. Just talk about it. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, I'm getting everybody saying talk about it. Huh? Everybody saying talk about it in chat. All right. One artist that I absolutely cannot stand is Lil Peep. <laughs> uh, fuck, man. Nah, nah, I can't go back. Yeah, we'll talk about it, bro. Well, pretty much. Yeah, like, I understand he's, like, one of those artists that, you know, people, like, his music helped people. His his music probably saved people's lives and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, music does that. Music has that healing factor that can, like, channel the certain emotions that, like, pull you out of certain states. Right. And I, I don't feel like that's... Well, it's obviously not just Lil Peep, though. It's like every really, like, real band. Yeah. Like, it all, Just all music in general has that. It's like anything that you, anything that you, you like, you like. You know, some things, some things pull you out of those states. But, I mean, sometimes I just don't feel like 
that's enough to save an artist from like any criticism at all. I'm pretty sure fucking Metallica pulled people out of those super depressing states. Yeah, for sure. But yet, a lot of people dog on them. Right. So I feel like, you know, just because the specific artist passed away doesn't mean that he's a void of all criticism. Mm hmm. I will admit, there, there are, like, well, there is one song I like. Which song? That's Falling Down. Oh, okay. Oh, that's but that's like, mainly because I like X. <laughs> right. But I don't know. I just, I never liked his singing style. I never really liked, like, his content. The stuff that I've heard, I don't know. I just... I'm... <laughs> I, I never really got into Lil Peep. Like, I, I know so many people that absolutely love him and fucking adore him with every piece of them. I respect that. It's just not my cup of tea. Yeah, it's not my cup of tea, but uh, honestly, I, don't, I just I just don't like it. Yeah, peop- it's like, it's people not my... Hate us. It, it's but, not that I don't... Yeah, you know, I can, like, listen to it. Respect the drip, Karen. Sorry. Fuck, how do I put this without sounding like a massive cunt? Uh, pretty much, there's some artists where if I don't like, you know, and one of their songs come on, I can listen to it. But mm-hmm. it's like when one of his songs come on, it's like, uh. Right, it's like, it just uh, feels like, like it's. It's just, I don't, I don't like that style pretty yeah. much. You know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not dogging on his fan base or anything or like the people that like him. It's just my personal preference, you know? The thing I absolutely hate, and I'm going to get hate for this guaranteed, is are the fans that stand up for him with their whole fucking life. Like, I get it. You enjoy his music. You uh, you love him. Whatever the case may be. But just because somebody doesn't share the same opinion as you, just because somebody doesn't like it, doesn't mean he's the greatest of all time. Yeah, exactly. And there's some people that, like, put him to, like, such a higher pedestal than he actually is. Right. Like, this... You already know what I'm talking about. This yeah. dumbass motherfucker literally posted a picture of him and then Elvis and said, the true kings of rock and roll. No. And as soon as I saw that, I wanted to have a fucking drug over this. I wanted to fucking die. <laughs> That's fucked. <laughs> Honestly, I don't give a shit because now I'm, like, getting worked up over that fucking right, right. It's like... How are you going to sit there and, like, discredit all these other fucking artists and then talk shit to somebody when they Disagree. don't agree with you? It's like the fan base... The fan base can be the best thing in the world and then the most toxic thing in the world. Like, a fucking... Yeah. A Justin Bieber fan, like, at the height of his popularity would probably stab you if you talk shit oh, to him. Oh, 100%. Dude, I, th- I talk shit to my sister about him when she was majorly obsessed with mm-hmm. him. And she's... She, Oh my god, she would. Uh, I was afraid for my life, bro. <laughs> yeah, or like some, even like a diehard fan of fucking Slayer, bro. Like even more than I am, they would probably throw hands if I like talk shit about them. Yeah, they would. They, but I mean, that that's al- a thing. that also goes for like like I keep on saying, every other band. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter what genre it is, there's always going to be those people which really fucking pisses me off. Yeah, it's more like... I don't want to talk shit because... Like I said, I do respect like what he did for people. You know, he helped a lot of people out. But I'm, I'm also not going to sit here and just flat out blatantly say that he sucks and shit like that. I'm just saying, you know, he's not for me. I don't like that type of style. I'm not really a fan of like his lyrics and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I will never, like, go out and just... I'll save that for, like, a couple of bands. <laughs> right. Hey, you know you know, you know, know uh, who I can't stand? Who? Chief Keef. Chief Keef? Honestly, I've never even heard of one of this. I don't listen to, like, that modern <laughs> fucking shit. No, I just said that to, to talk shit to somebody in chat. Oh. <laughs> um, but the same thing with, like, X. I didn't, like... I didn't like most of his music, but there's still some songs I like. Like Moon, like pretty much like his singles and shit. Mm-hmm. I like Riot. I like Moonlight. I like Sad. Uh, what was that one song called? Jocelyn Flores. Uh, some shit like that. I don't know. But any of like his other stuff, I really don't care for that much. Mm-hmm. There's um, oh god damn it! I keep on fucking forgetting what I was gonna say. Oh, 
How do you feel about Baby Metal? Baby Metal? Uh, I don't really listen to them. I like their instrumentals. I like their instrumentals. I can't not stay in their voices. That is... Hmm. No, like... No. I just can't. I. There's something about their high-ass voices over that deep-ass guitar, the, the fast... No, I can't. That fucking Give Me Chocolate song, like... I saw them live because they were playing. I can't remember what show I was at. They were playing at one of the uh, one of the festivals that I went to, and <laughs> like when this is the first time I've ever heard of them, I was like, "Oh, baby metal! Like, what the fuck? This has got to be like a joke band." And then they came up, and like I heard the fucking guitars. They were starting out. They were they were going good, and then they started singing, and I'm like. Oh no! Like I, it, it was hard for me to mosh to that. It was just something that was making me cringe, and like I'm not. I don't know. How do you feel about their voices? Like I said, I don't really uh, listen to baby metal. I don't see. I'm not familiar with any other music, honestly. I'll show you a song after this. Um, any other questions that I could think of? You got any questions for me? Um, somebody asked Trump or Biden. Well, first off, why are the fuck are we even getting political? Why would we even get political on a podcast where we just we're talking about music? <laughs> yeah, we leaving the podcast or the podcast the the politics out of this one, baby. Thank you for the like, though. I appreciate it. <laughs> um. It's up to you if you want to talk about it. I don't no, do I'm, politics. I'm not. I'm not trying to talk about politics on this podcast. Maybe in the uh, in the next one or something. <laughs> you know, whether no matter what you say about that, everybody has something to fucking say about anything. Oh yeah, and I'm down to go off about that. Not now. Um, another one that I don't really like that is pretty controversial, but I don't think so really. I think it's more of like a phase man. Hmm. Hollywood and Dead. Oh. Yeah, I like I like their older stuff. Their new stuff, I'm not a fan of. I guess they just released a song that Austin was just telling me about. I haven't gotten out of my way to listen to it just yet. I think I might do that tonight or something. But like their the stuff that they came out with recent, like or like over the past couple years, is just something I've never like. I I just it just sounded different than their old stuff. Obviously, they're evolving. I respect that completely. But it's just kind of pushed me away from it because that's not the style that I'm into. That's not, like, I don't know. That's just something I can't get into. Um, Hollywood and Dead is just, they're cool. But I'll listen to their old stuff, not their new stuff. Unfortunately, I don't, I just never like them in general. Right, yeah. It was like, I would listen to them mainly because that's what every single person in our friend group listens to. Mainly me and Austin. <laughs> Not yeah, Austin more than you though I would say. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, for Austin sure. would be the one to like show me every single song, and I'd be like, "Both pretty good, man." Yeah, and then just kind of go home and forget about it. Or like it's more like just waiting for it to be over. That way I could play my fucking music. <laughs> <laughs> um, Spoonerism said it reminds me it reminds him of playing UFC Undisputed. <laughs> well, Hollywood did. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Whenever I hear. Whenever I think of US or UFC Undisputed, I always think of the fucking Sweet Victory theme song. Oh yeah, because <laughs> one of the Bro, fighters came up to that. Came out to that. That song is legendary. I don't care what anybody says. Don't at me. That song is legendary. Whenever I think of like Undisputed Three, though, I think of like the fucking Pride music, the Japanese mm-hmm. stuff, because they had a mode in that. Right. Oh god, what was that noise? <laughs> <laughs> you good? Oh, uh, that was a burp. Mm-hmm. Very well. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I never really liked that style. Right. I don't know. I made, like, this real, I was I was drunk the other night, and I made this really bad comparison. I saved the message. Oh, God. What was it? Are you looking for it? Yeah. This might, like, <laughs> this might upset some people, or I don't know, maybe... Maybe people will agree. I mean, they've been agreeing on most of the stuff that we've said so far. Except for uh, Spoon and his uh, Chief Keef, but, you know. 
I said, I said, they kind of sound like other artists, but done by better. Mm-hmm. I said, they sound like if Lincoln Park and Slipknot fucked, and had a retarded baby because one of them drank <laughs> while pregnant. <laughs> Bruh. I I think I also, oh yeah, I also said they kind of have like the rap rock style of Lincoln Park with the personality of Slipknot with like the masks and shit. Right. But now that I'm, like, reading that back, it's like... Yes and eh. no. Yeah, kind of. I don't know. I think my head was somewhat in <laughs> in a place. Right. I mean, you, you were just passionate about what you were talking about. You were just getting carried away in it. I yeah. get it. <laughs> Who'd you talk about that with? My friend Denise. Yeah, very well. Feelings on Tortilla Man. <laughs> don't know. I don't know. Feelings on Afro Man, bro. <laughs> bro, Afro Man's a god. I don't care what anybody Dude, says. have you heard his new song? No, I haven't heard it. Fuck. Can't play it right now. I know. I'm going to look up the title, though. That way you can check it out. All right, for sure. Yeah, just send me that. <laughs> I was listening to it on the way to San Francisco yesterday, and I actually thought to myself, wow, this is a fucking bop. It's a bop. It's a schlapper, friends. It's a fucking, like, country-style song. Is it? Yeah. No shit. Cross country rapping is it on there? <laughs> What's it called? The album? Uh, I'm trying to find it. <laughs> right. This dude puts out a lot of fucking music. Right. Oh, I haven't. I haven't listened to like I haven't gone out of my way to listen to him in a cool minute. I'm sure everybody knows that one song. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that one moment where he fucking decked that chick on stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Grown Folks Music, is it on here? Kurt Cobain did the same thing. <laughs> Prodigal Son, where the fuck is it? <sighs> Why am I yawning? I'm not even tired, man. It's going to be early early bedtime for me today. I'm going to go home, listen to some uh, some music, and then crash, probably. Maybe hop on the phone with somebody. Afro man. Where is it? Oh, well, forget about it right now. Um, thank God I'm a homeboy. I think that's what thank, it's called. Thank God I'm a homeboy? He has, like, fucking bunch of songs named uh, Homeboy, though. Mm-hmm. Dong of the South. I heard that one. On Bro, the yep. <laughs> fucking San Francisco. That's hella funny. Um, what other bands do we not like? Black Veil Brides. I can't fucking stand them. I never really listened to them. Like, I saw the way that they looked, and I was like, "Yeah, that's good enough for me." <laughs> right. Uh, I'm not. It's like I'm, I'm not going to talk shit on a band I haven't like listened to just based off their looks, too. Hmm. I I met. Yeah, you, I've told you about this. I met Andy Nutsack in a Andy fucking. Andy Balsack. Yeah, Andy Balsack. Uh. It like, it pissed me off so bad. I was on the phone with my friend. I walked up to him. I was like, "Hey, man! Like, can I uh, can I get an autograph? My friend's a big fan of yours. Like, can you can you just say hi on the phone for, uh, for her real quick?" And I put it on speaker, and he looks at me dead in the eyes with the straightest face and goes, "Fuck off, faggot!" Oh! <laughs> and I was like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, fuck off, faggot!" And I like, I was like, "What the fuck?" It took me everything I had not to just fucking deck him right there, and then I just turned around and walked away. I, I would have had all his fangirls and all the security on my ass. And, mm oh my god, that that turned me off of their music immediately. Like, before that, I was okay with it. Like, I, it was another one of those bands where I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to. Like, but I had a lot of friends that were like, oh, you should learn this on guitar, you should learn that on guitar, all by Black Veil Brides. Um, and... I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that, I'll do that. And then that happened, and I instantly just said, nope, not happening. I'm not touching their music. I'm not listening to them. If he's going to be treating his fans that way or whatever, it ain't going to happen. That ain't it, Chief. (laughs) That ain't it, Chief. Yeah, fuck. I I don't know. I think I'm... I think I talked about all the stuff that I'm not a big fan of and that I despise. Oh, I can go on and on about this. Uh, somebody, just name a band that you don't think I like. A band that, I don't know. <laughs> or, or that you think I dislike. 
Isn't that the same thing? <laughs> I don't know. I got my shit twisted, I think, but I can't remember that far back because I'm stupid. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do we got any questions in chat or what? Yeah, for you guys that don't know that are listening to the podcast later on, I'm live streaming this on Spoon. <laughs> Spoon is a fun and exciting app where you get to live stream with just your voice. We're in not case sponsored. you haven't fucking seen that in every single YouTube advertisement. We're not sponsored. We're not sponsored, but... No, it's all over Snapchat, bro. I, I haven't over, seen... Yeah, fucking Snapchat. Ah, do us. <laughs> fucking Ramenstein. I fucking love him, bro. Ramenstein, Ramenstein. I don't fucking care Ramenstein. how you say it. Ramenstein. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care how you say it, bro, but it's a good band. It's a good band. I like it. Melanie Martinez. I heard one song and it was Handlebars, and I'm totally not gonna like why that was a pretty fucking good song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like the melody of it. Oh. It was a pretty fucking good song. You know what? Now thinking about it, going back to um, the guilty pleasures, fucking Taylor Swift. Oh yeah, I've, I've, I fucking love Taylor Swift. Now here's the thing with me. Miley Cyrus, in some ways, is a guilty pleasure. There's some songs I really like, but I, there's some songs I'm like, uh, why the fuck are you doing this? I can't do Miley Cyrus. I can do Hannah Montana, not but Miley Cyrus. There's <laughs> one song that I just absolutely fucking love for Miley Cyrus, and that's Malibu. <laughs> right. That's, oh, that, a, that's, good that's, a, that's song. a good song. Yeah, I I will give her that. Mainly because that was af- that was like I think the first single after Bangers and like wait no Dead Pets. Mm-hmm. Even fucking baby talk. That's like a, a song that I could just listen to for like the stupid ass spoken word parts. Right. But as soon as she starts singing, I'm like, dude, she has a voice. <laughs> right. There's a lot of people that are like, uh, like hated on because of like whatever. Mm. I personally, I will say that Ariana Grande, like, I don't like her music, but she has some fucking talent. Oh yeah, for sure. She's uh, she's fucking talented, dude. Like no straight up. Let's just transition into fucking singers we don't like, but we give them their dues. Uh, let's see here. I can't think of any like that. Well, I mean, I'm, I've named like eight during this podcast so far, but or like even like art. You know what? Let's just fucking talk about yeah, music. Let's talk. Again. We got we have most of the fucking. What are we at? Forty-seven. Yeah, let's hit. Let's try to at least make it like an hour. Yeah, we'll make it an hour. Fuck it. I don't think we have an. Hour. We've only had one hour, like a one-hour podcast. Yeah, and that was the one where we talk about music. <laughs> right. Um. There's one singer out there that I think is incredibly slept on. Hmm. That's Jackie Ivanko. Jackie Ivanko. Yeah, she was on America's Got Talent one time. She she was like a ten year old opera singer, but now she's oh. she's an adult now. Dude, her voice is fucking powerful. Mm-hmm. Like there is this one performance that she was doing. I think she was at City National Civic in uh, San Jose. Yeah, she did like this melody, and then uh, "My Heart Will Go On" by S- S- what's her name? Sion. I I have no idea. Fuck. <laughs> Titanic. Dion. Dude, I've been like, I've been saying like bringing that song up for so long. I should know her fucking name. No one. Do you remember Celine Dion? Yeah. Do you remember that one chick? All right, she was she can't even. Uh, ooh, excuse me. I can't even call her a chick. Like she was like a a, a little girl that was on uh, America's. I think it was on America's Got Talent. I think it was uh, Grace Vanderwall. Oh, she plays the ukulele? Yeah. Yeah. She's fucking good. Have you seen her now? Uh, no. She's doing good stuff with her music. It's actually pretty, like, badass. It's it's almost inspirational. Like, she's so she's so young. I don't even think she's, like, 14 or 15 yet. I think she is. She Maybe maybe I she's, feel, like, 16. I think she might be, like, close to 18, actually. On, I'm gonna look that up. Hold on. Give me one I don't second. know. It's been so long since i fucking seen America's Got Talent. I think the last time I watched that was when fucking Tyra Banks was uh, like the sideline. She just replaced Nick Cannon. Mm-hmm. That was unbearable yeah, to watch. She's, she's 16 years old. Okay. 
I, th- I, I knew she was like up old, there, like, yeah, up old, there in like the free <laughs> team, yeah, like the older than old. she was when we watched that on America's, America's Got Talent. But yeah, I was uh, back to Jackie Ivanko. I was watching her cover that, and I've. It's rare when I get chills from somebody's voice. Right. But she was playing that uh, Celine Dion's song. Mm-hmm. And, like, when, like, the whole, like, the the last chorus hits, like, when everything kind of explodes, mm-hmm. she sang that part. But instead of, like, you know, like, the screams that Celine Dion does. Yeah. She fucking, like, harmonizes with it, and it gave me chills. Oh, it was shit. fucking good, dude. I gotta, I gotta look into that. Now, one, one of the artists that... I'm not too big on, but they did one song that I prefer. Uh, like I can, I'll take that a hundred times over. The real one, or like the original, is "Disturbed" with the sound of silence. That was an amazing fucking cover. I don't care what anybody says. That was that was like one of those covers where it was so good they made the song their own. Right. It's kind of like I don't know if you like you listened to it or not. It was um. Uh, Tennessee whiskey. My what was his name? Fuck! Why can't I remember his name? Um, Tennessee whiskey. I can think of uh, one. Chris Stapleton. Like he took that song and made it his own. Like there's that oh, is yeah. my all-time you favorite song. Yeah, you showed me that one. That was that was really good too. Yeah, it's, it's he's got soul and he's got rasp and he's he's got everything. Fuck, dude! I was just thinking about it. Was mm. thank you, Kayla. My fucking, I always always loved it. <laughs> what? You're gonna hate this one. Oh no! I fucking love that cover of whiskey. <laughs> In the jar by Metallica. Oh, I fucking hate that so much. <laughs> I love dude. it. That came on the radio the other day, and I just straight up turned it off. I didn't even change the station. <laughs> it's 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 I, I love it. I I'm not gonna say it's better than the original one, but every time I hear it, it's like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, <laughs> send it, it spread it. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it. I just can't stand it. Like that's that's one of the songs by a really good band that. Was also covered by a really good band that was just fucked up. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's. <laughs> What's your? You know my favorite Metallica album. Lou yeah. Lou. Oh no, that's a Lou Reed album. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's pretty much. There's yeah, my favorite lyric of all time is in the very first song. I am the table. Oh no, uh, it's oh, was... even better than that. What is it? I cut my legs and tits off. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Literally, that's the first. That's the first line of Lulu. Hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What else? Small town girl. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother! Get that shit. No, there was a fuck. Another. What do you call it? Cover that a band did. It was. Oh, there it is. I would cut my legs and tits off when I think of Boris Karloff. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? <laughs> 90% of that album makes no sense at all. James Hetfield screaming, I am the table. Like, I, I, I understand the context, but that's not the way to say it. <laughs> I fucking... I can... I've, I've never been able to listen to, like, three songs off of that. Mm-mm. I can't. I... I one day I just decided to torture myself and see how long I could sit through that album. I lasted, I think, four songs. Or no, I lasted two songs and then I had to turn it off. It was just... No. Lou Reed is a good artist by himself. Metallica is a good band by themselves. Mm -hmm. Put together, it's... Kaka poo poo shit. It is the worst thing that you will ever hear in your life. Guaranteed. What's up, Brendan Rogers, my guy? Um, this is a rare case of like when you listen to one song from it, it's kind of bad. But if you listen to the whole album all the way through, it's not too bad. Mm-hmm. Saint Anger, right? Like I, I don't, I don't mind it. 
the thing with Saint Anger, in my opinion, is you have to listen to the album like, like front to back. Right. You have. It, you have. I feel like you have to do that a couple times in order to like really, not necessarily enjoy it, but like, like yeah, enjoy it to a certain degree. I remember listening to what was it? Shoot me again. That song's fucking awful when you just listen to it by itself. But it's the build up from like all the previous songs before it. Yeah, it flows with an album. Right. Kinda like kinda like that Blink one eighty two song that I fucking hated when it was first released. Blame it on my youth. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't stand that song like just alone. But as it flows with nine, mm-hmm. I don't mind it. Right. <laughs> I actually kinda like it. Right. I still think that's like their weakest single they've ever put out, but it all de- it, it's it's just the flow of the album that like really changes your mind about a song. Yeah, I'm I'm just not a fan of the way Green Day is going with things. Oh, yeah, I I won't even fucking hesitate to say it. Green Day's new album fucking sucked. Uh-huh. Like I don't care what anybody says. It's just it was a bad album. Mm-hmm. It's like you can't, you can, yeah, you can say that fucking a band's allowed to do whatever they want if they do the same sound, right? But if you're gonna go like that far to change your sound, like you're to something that's not even that fucking good, you're you're trying too hard. You're trying to too hard to destroy your old image. You're trying too hard to gain traction with the new newer era if you will and let's not fucking forget that awful billboard that they used to promote it it what was it it was no trap beats no swedish songwriters no just 100 percent pure uncut rock and roll no i read that i read that fucking billboard and the first thing that popped in my head was junkies on a high Right, that fucking. I, I, I. Yeah, oh beginning. my god, that pissed I'm me like, off what so the fuck bad. Is that? Bro, you Literally. showed me that when we were in the car, and I was like, "Well, dude, that, that's not Green Day." The best song on that album, "Sugar Youth," is followed up by, in my opinion, the worst song on that album. Right, I, I didn't s- give that album a chance. I'm not gonna lie. It's the it's the very first album by Green Day that I didn't buy. Because, yeah, like, I stream my music, but I'll also buy it. Because I feel like that's the ultimate way to show support to a band. Is purchasing, like, the physical copy. Mm-hmm. Like, fucking, even when I was stupid enough to, like, think California was the best thing ever, I bought the cassette, I bought the fucking CD, I bought the deluxe version of the CD. Did I bought the, the vinyl. vinyl, yeah. I bought the splatter vinyl. Well, actually, my ex bought me the splatter vinyl. You're right. And the cassette. <laughs> no, the thing... One thing that I am glad, it's not Green Day, but Blink-182, they started to go down a little bit. It, oh yeah, we were just talking about fucking Blink, dumbass. Uh, they, they started going down a little bit, and then they kind of picked themselves back up. Or they're yeah, starting to. I will, the, the way, because I feel like, you know. If, Speak. <laughs> let me <laughs> let me get in. Let me get into the zone to talk about Blink One Eight Two. Uh, here we go. Because I got a lot of fucking shit to say. John Feldman, in a way, ruined them for sure. Yeah, and then built them back up in a way. He 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 took them down to uh, to to shit, and then he built them back up the way he wanted it. I don't think the way he wanted it because I think if he fucking really wanted it to sound it like sound they, like Goldfinger, it sound like fucking Fizing as a summer, right? Right. Because a couple of songs on fucking California, like Home is Such a Lonely Place, sounded like Fizing as a summer. I'm not gonna lie, that that was a good song. It was I a like good song. song. I like that song. But uh, yeah, you can pick any Fizing as a Summer acoustic song, and that song, and it would sound identical. Right. Plus, I think like. With some bands, I feel like they don't like the music just because of the name alone. Mm-hmm. Like, there's some people that won't like... Ah, fuck, I'm trying to think. There's Just take, like, a random, like, artist that somebody doesn't like. Even if the song's good, they won't give it a chance because it, they already know they don't like that. Right. All of, like, the Blink-182 haters. Mm-hmm. I, they, I've they, had so many people say like I've heard so many people say like Blink One Eighty Two isn't Blink One Eighty Two without Tom DeLonge. I, I'm gonna have to disagree on that. 
Now, here's the thing with me on that situation. Let's go all the way back to, like, California. I didn't... I was, I was like, on the fucking Tom Hate train. Mm -hmm. Like, I was kind of pissed off that he was kind of putting Blink-182 to the side. But then again, like, I realized, you know, people's passions change and shit. Right. But, yeah, like, while I was, like, kind of disappointed that he wasn't going to be on the album... I fucking love Alkaline Trio. I was right. so excited to see that Matt Skiba was going to be on there. Mm -hmm. And they they wrote a bunch of songs before Feldman came on. And I was so excited to hear that. And then when I found out uh, Feldman was uh, joining, because I love Goldfinger too. Right. Like, Goldfinger's awesome. Goldfinger's a good band. Mm -hmm. And then I found out the type of shit he produces himself. Bison is a summer, all time lows. Uh, Future Hearts album. <laughs> I feel like they, f dude, Feldman did a Disturb song, and even he made it sound like a typical John Feldman song. Really? Yeah. Open your eyes. Oh, that's what that he, he produced that. Yeah, that's why there's a whoa. <laughs> I didn't open even I didn't even realize eyes. that. Yeah, like that's you, that one that's like on the radio. right? Yeah, if you listen to that song with the album. You won't be able to, like, tell. But if you listen to every single John Feldman song in order, and then you listen to that one, you'll be able to tell. <laughs> Fuck, I learned something new today. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I was so, like, I was so into Blink-182, and I was so excited to get a new Blink album. Mm -hmm. I was pretty much, like, willing to accept whatever shit they put out. And I will admit, I loved Bored to Death, like, when that song dropped. Mm -hmm. You were there when I first heard it. <laughs> yeah. And I still do think it's a good song. Mm -hmm. Would I prefer that be like the lead single? No, I think there's a lot better off California that could have been the lead single. Right. A.K.A. San Diego. A.K.A. Cynical. Even though I think Cynical's a little too short to be a Cynical is such a good song, though. Cynical is one of their best openers, in my opinion. Uh-huh, I agree. I'm not saying it's the best, but it's one of the best. Cynical followed up by, uh, by Built This Pool. <laughs> um, yeah, the deluxe version, I agree, is way better than fucking California. <laughs> Uh, what should I call it? But yeah, like it was after California was well out when I started to like notice what people were talking about mm -hmm. it being overproduced, it being like oversaturated with na na nas and right. like over like compressed as fuck guitars. Right. I'm sure you've noticed that, like because you are in a band. Like I'm sure you've noticed that over like while being in a band, like you notice it more. Like, with uh, making your own music, in a way, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you, you see how it, like, how things should go, or should mm -hmm. sound, in, like, a certain way, or, like, how it could be better, how it could be worse, in, in that kind of sense, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, the thing with, like, my band and Blink-182s, is that my, the producer that we went to... Mm-hmm. By the way, the guy that we went to is, like, really good. He fucking costs a lot of money, which I'm not bragging about. He put me in debt. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> right? anyway, anyway, like, his pro his production's not, so, like, so polished that it kind of ruins the song. He kind of leaves it, like, a little bit raw. Like, the guitar on Room was fucking... It was aggressive. Mm -hmm. the, the drums weren't, like, compressed to shit. Right. Like, you could hear every drum, like, the way it should be sound. Right. Should be like, sound. Should be sound. <laughs> should be sounding. There we go. Right. Uh, that's, like, in my opinion, like a producer. Mm hmm Not everything's, like, polished to a fucking nice and shiny diamond. Right. California, on the other hand, and even Nine, I'm not going to, I'm not going to defend Nine from that. Mm -hmm. It's just so compressed in everything. It's so, like, overproduced. Right. Like, that was the good thing about Blink-182. Like, they were never fully polished and shit. They're, they're medium rare. While they still sounded, like, really good production-wise, it was never to the point where it was a problem. Right. That's where Jerry Finn, like, was so good with stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, like, I started noticing those problems. Um, and it kind of made me like dislike the album a little bit when like the more I heard na 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 whoa 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 it started to bug me mm -hmm. so I was kind of hoping that they would learn for nine and they did learn 
because there's only like two songs that have whoa whoa whoa's and they're for the they're put in the background mm-hmm. but with nine oh man i was i didn't know what the fuck we were gonna get with nine when mark did simple creatures with the singer from all time low right i thought he was getting his bad ideas at first mm-hmm. so we were all pumped like every fan was pumped and then we got Blame It On My Youth <laughs> as right. the lead single. Yeah, that was... Blame It On My Youth as the lead fucking single. <laughs> blame it, blame it on my youth. I can tell you one thing. The emotion that I felt being let down as a Blink-182 fan <laughs> was so hard-hitting that I was like... I literally lost all my faith in the album right there, and it was only one single. <laughs> but then Generational Divide came out. That really wasn't even much of a difference. Yeah. Because it was only 40 seconds. <laughs> and 10, 10 of those seconds is just letting the guitar feed, like, drown out the song. Right. Um, then Happy Days came out, and I was like, that's a good song. That's a decent song. Mm-hmm. The more I listened to it, I was like, that's a really good song. I love ha- I love Happy Days. Right. Dark Side came out, and I was like, eh, that's okay. With, with Happy Days, it's... I do agree, it is a really good song. But... I, I don't know. There's that's another one of those songs where I just don't know. There's there's something about it that I'm not too fond of. Um Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh I really wish I hated you. That song. I really wish I hated which one was that? I really wish I hated you right now. Uh I, every song I sing is all about you. you yeah. That song was like, oh my fucking god, what are we getting ourselves into? Yeah, that was that but, was that was strange. It was different. Yeah, for and sure. then and then when they finally announced the album, I'm like, nine. They have eight albums, right? And they explained that Buddha, they considered Buddha as an album. I was like, oh, I can see that, you know, right? It is, you know, a demo, but there is enough songs to kind of like, like enough consider different it, songs. Yeah, consider it an album. Yeah, so I could see where they would get that from. Yeah, um, my my. My expectations were so low mm-hmm. <laughs> for the album. And then I, I leaked it like a month later because it, it got leaked and I was going to pick it up. Right. I listened to the album freshly after being, like, fresh being dumped. Right. Oh, Just got out of a relationship yeah. for, right. like, after four years. I remember that. Out of mm-hmm. nowhere. And, like, listening through the album, like, first, the first five songs are the singles. Except for uh, the first time, the very first, the opening track, which is a good song. Mm-hmm. Uh, at first, the trap drums like bothered me, but honestly, I kind of dig it. I cause I like the different, like the different. Yeah, I like how different it sounds, but it blends in well now. And then the rest were like, you know, happy days. Heaven was the one that I haven't heard. That was a good. That was a really good song. Then it was dark side. Blame it on my generational divide. And then the back half is what we haven't heard except for I Really Wish I Hated You. Right. I fucking... I heard Runaway. That was a surprisingly good song. Um, Black Rain was good. I Really Wish I Hated You. That was like the first time when I realized that the flow of an album really changes the song. Because yeah. I really liked... Oh, yeah. I really liked I Really Wish I Hated You after that. I, I, I like that song now. But man... Pin the Grenade was a classic Blink song. I fucking love that song. And then, No Heart to Speak Of. <laughs> now, if you know that song, if you know what I'm talking about, you know how, like, how powerful that song is. And honestly, like the, the, the shit that I was going through at that time, because like I said, I was still fresh off of a, a breakup that mm-hmm. I wasn't prepared for. Right. That fucking song was... It was like that song was written for me. About me. Right. I never related to a song's lyrics. And that was like the first time where I really felt connected to a song. Mm-hmm. Because... Do you still feel connected to that at all? Dude, that's like... It's crazy because that's like one of my favorite Blink-182 songs of all time now. I would probably put that in like top five. Mm-hmm. And I don't regret saying that because it's a good song. Anybody that listens to Nine will tell you that that's the best song on the album. Right. Or they'll try to be like fucking poser assholes and they'll be like, actually, I think this one's the best song. But no, dude, it's fucking, it's n- no heart to speak of. Mm-hmm. That's the fucking song where Matt shines. Matt shines for the first time in Blink-182. I do agree with that one. 
And then on some emo shit. Oh, another yeah. Another song yeah. that speaks exactly what I was going through in that moment. Right. It's that's that's one of the things about like like what we were talking about earlier, like music has healing powers, but like Yes. The first step to healing is getting hurt in the first place, you know what I mean? Yeah. And for it was just so fucking funny because I had the lowest expectations for this album. Mm-hmm. And those two songs alone made it made what like, it, is. it was my favorite album of 2019. I was not preparing to say that. I was I was preparing to shit all over the nine. But I'm I'm telling you right now, if I didn't go through a what like that shit, and I just listened to those songs as a Blink One Eight Two fan, mm-hmm. I don't know like how I would feel about it. But since I was going through that breakup, and those songs happened to be on the album so close to that, right? It really fucking like affected like my perspective on the album. Mm-hmm. And like it's it's like one of those things that you can like get emotionally attached to. I'm emotionally right. attached to that album because of the circumstances that was that that you were putting. Yeah. It's so. I have like I have a couple songs like that and it's like that's that's the crazy thing about music for me is like like again, like I just said, we were just talking about it earlier. Um Music does have those healing powers, healing like like powers, abilities, if you will, whatever whatever you want to call it. It's like there's people make music that people can relate to, and it's once you hear a song that you can relate to, you have a whole different perspective, like uh, outlook or perspective on what whatever it may be whether it be the album whether it be the band in general whether it be a single person that wrote the song in in the first place you know what i mean it's you you feel like you said connected Mm -hmm. and it's it once you hear that song for the first time it like in your situation i'm sure when you heard those songs for the first time it absolutely fucking destroyed you yeah dude like that was I swear to God, that was the first time I ever cried to a song. Right. I've been alive for fucking 21 years on this earth, and I've never cried to a song. But when I heard those for the first time, like, every emotion that I had bottled up was just let loose. Mm-hmm. And I've never felt that way to a song. That's why, like, I hold these songs so close to me. Right. It's because they not only, like, they spoke to me, they helped me heal through the process. Mm-hmm. And anybody that, you know, like, shits on music not being able to heal, heal you, that's, like, some bullshit. It's not. Like, that actually, it helps. It right. really does. You just have to find the right songs to, like, help make, that make you heal. Right. Help and you heal. That brings me back to what I said just a little bit ago. Like, the first step of getting better, of healing, is to be hurt in the first place. To get hurt first. I'm not saying to go out of your way and fucking, like go break up with somebody to break your own heart to feel feel some sort of way for a song like that's obviously fucking stupid that's the last thing that i want you to do but once you are if you are put in that situation i'm sure everybody will be at one point or another if you have or haven't yet um like most people do understand what i'm saying i don't necessarily understand what i'm talking talking about right now for whatever reason my brain's saying fuck you and skipping but I think what I'm trying to say is like, once you hear that song, you're gonna have that connection. You're gonna have certain feelings for X, Y, and Z. Uh, that stuff will break you down, and then it'll start picking you back up after you listen to it over and over again. Like that's that's a big creative outlet. You could be singing the song at the top of your lungs if you think about it. That's creativity. You're singing it yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's you're you're letting it go you're letting it out and whether people realize it or not singing a song whether it be quiet to yourself or fucking out loud up on a stage it doesn't matter you could be in the shower you're letting it go you're letting it out you're releasing some fucking negative energy and then after you listen to that song and sing that song or play it on guitar piano fucking violin fucking harp it doesn't matter what you're playing it on you feel better yeah i can even say that about my own music right fucking always a light Mm -hmm. you know like that's the one thing as an artist that i hope to achieve the most is like 
our music helping people out. Mm-hmm. Like some somebody told me that always a light like helped them through what they were going through. And that song was written with me and Matt's emotions in mind, like because we both went through breakups. We we're both, you know, in a pretty dark place. That was around the same time, right? Hmm? That was around the same time, right? Uh, his is a little bit before me, but right. he, it was around the same general time. Yeah, but like with always a light, like that song not only spoke to him, like what he was going through, but it was also like what I was going through too. So like that that song. That song can like, like when we say it's an like an inspiring song, it's from like real personal like experience. We're yeah. going through some shit, right? And uh, it's, I feel like that was like truly Matt's redemption story right there. You know, mm-hmm. finding yourself in such a dark place that you uh, you're able to pull yourself out and see like the bright, the bright days ahead. You know, like it it always gets better Mm -hmm. even if it takes a while it always gets better yeah 100 percent. and i think like people realize that people were able to like feel what matt was going through and were able to like rise with him and stuff like heal with him right right and that's that's see with uh with you guys not uh your, your band not being like very like obviously very big uh you're more of a local band right now um it doesn't matter how big or small your band is. If you write a song that can that you can connect to people with, that you can make people feel, even if you feel like it's a shitty song, somebody's gonna fucking love it. Exactly. Like there's people out there that absolutely love Lu- uh, Lulu. I don't know why, but I don't yeah. know why, but yeah, they, they they enjoy it because that's just the way they like it i guess yeah pretty much what we're trying to say is that everybody relates with something in this world anything can help you heal and every anything can just you know hate like just work i guess yeah Yeah. what do people say like one man's trash is another man's treasure yeah pretty much like my ex with the next guy (laughs) she finds same though literally like if i go to fucking dollar journal and she's like i got a better man now he has a bigger dick than you and he has more money and like all right cool good for you bud another man's trash is another man's treasure exactly you got you gotta gotta hand the uh the used toys down to the poor (laughs) exactly you know even if he polishes a turd still a piece of shit (laughs) exactly all right that's the last time that's the last time i'm gonna diss my ex (laughs) she ain't worth it (laughs) anyway ain't worth the energy bro Ain't worth the energy and the heartbreak. Uh, we're we're past that now, right? Yep. Cool. Good shit. Yeah. All right. So that's pretty much all I have to say. Huh? We're done. I we think you want to so. keep going? I'm I'm done. I, all right. I think I could. I don't think I could have ended it on a better like note than with that right? and Insp- like that inspiration, the, the dying story, and the always a light story. Right. Right. All right, guys, thank you for popping in and listening. This was a Real Meal podcast. Again, yep. I'm Joe. All right, I'm Jacob. Thank you for checking us out. Hopefully it won't take us another fucking four months to come up with another podcast, but we'll you know, see. things happen. We'll see. Have a nice day. Wash your hands and stay safe. Keep out of that COVID weather. <laughs> yes. Deuces. <laughs>